Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm now going to go through question number seven from the Solomon D collection for P3, formerly known as C3, the Pure Mathematics 3 from the International A level for Edexcel. This is from the Solomon collection of papers. Um, and this is question number seven from that paper and question number 11 from the end of topic worksheet number two for my P3 um, series functions and graphs. Now, in this question, we're asked to sketch on the same diagram the graphs of y equals 4a squared minus x squared, and y is equal to the modulus of 2x minus a, all of it inside the modulus sign, where a is a positive constant, show in terms of a the coordinates of any points where each graph meets the coordinate axis. Okay, so basically here we have a quadratic, which is a, a normal quadratic, and here we have a linear uh, function inside the modulus so it's a modulus function and we have to now make a sketch of both of these graphs on the same pair of axes so what I'm going to do is I'll make my my y-axis and my x-axis okay I can see that neither of these graphs will go below the x-axis okay in fact this the first one will because it's opening downwards so yeah it will actually so I'm, I'm going to Make my axis like this, that's fine. Okay, now, so let's start with the quadratic. So this is y equals, y equals 4a squared minus x squared. Now, this graph is a quadratic with a negative in front of the x squared. The coefficient of x squared, we normally call that a, but I'm not going to call it a now, because there's another a here. Coefficient of x squared is less than 1, so it's going to be a frowny face. Okay, it's going to look like that frowny face. Um, so it's going to definitely look like that. And we can see that the y-intercept, let's see, when x equals 0. Okay, we're going to get the y-intercept when x equals 0. So that's when y equals 4a squared. So it's going to cut the y-axis. Now, it says a is a positive constant. Even if it was a negative constant in this case, okay, it's going to be squared anyway. So it's going to be squared and multiplied by 4. So it's going to definitely be cutting the y-axis up here somewhere so let's call that 4a squared that's where it's gonna this is where the quadratic will cut the y-axis and that will also be the vertex okay because if you think about it this is already in complete the square form this is like saying minus it's like saying 4a squared minus x plus 0 squared you can think of it like that so the coordinates of the vertex are going to be 0 and 4a squared which is that so you can think of it in that sense so or you can think of it as minus x squared being raised up by 4a squared. So the vertex was already at the origin and it's moved up 4a squared spaces up. And you end up with the, your, you know, the vertex over here. It's going to be upside down. We also need to know where it crosses the, the x-axis. And it crosses the x-axis when y is equal to 0. So that's y equals 0. So we're going to have to solve the equation 4a squared minus x squared equals 0. That will tell us the, the x-intercept. So... If you rearrange that, you get x squared equals 4a squared. So x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 4a squared, which is going to be 2a. So it's going to cross the x-axis. There's no limit to the... Okay, they didn't mention any uh, domain, so we assume the domain is all real numbers. So that's fine. So it's going to be plus 2a and minus 2a. So let's say this is plus 2a. And this is minus 2a. Okay, now we can draw the graph going through these points. Can make this a bit closer to there. In fact, you know what? Actually, I, I actually prefer to do. I prefer to draw the graph first and then put the points in, because I always end up missing them. So I'm just going to draw a graph, and if it misses them, I'll just change the points. Okay, so that's not too bad. That will be acceptable, I guess. But I'm just going to move this so it meets that point there. So that's minus two a, and that's plus two a. Those are the x-intercepts. And there we have a, a sketch of y equals, so this is y equals 4a squared minus x squared. Okay, so we've got the places where it crosses the y-axis and the x-axis. We've got the shape of a parabola, upside down, frowny face. That one's sorted out. Now we've got y equals the modulus of 2x minus a. Now to draw a graph like this, you can start off if you want to draw the graph of y equals 2x minus a. Now in this case, uh, when x is 0, Okay, y is going to be minus a. So it would normally, if it didn't have the modulus sign, it would normally go through minus a, which is, say, somewhere about here. 
Okay, and it would also go through um, when y equals zero, you're gonna have two x minus a equals zero. So x is going to be minus or plus a over two. So it's also gonna go through a over two somewhere over here. So it's gonna have this type of shape. Okay, that's how it normally would look. So I'm just gonna draw it as it would normally look. And then I'm going to modify it. So you would normally draw it going through both of these points here. Okay, going through the, both of these points. But as it's a modulus function, once it reaches the x-axis, the whole thing is inside the modulus. It's going to stop at this point, and it's going to the part that was below it is going to reflect above it. So the minus a intercept actually is going to be plus a. And we can see that if I put x equals 0 into, into the modulus function, I'll get y equals the modulus of minus a, which is equal to a. So that's why it's going to go through. It's going to have a branch that goes up like this. Okay, so here we have the graph y equals y equals a modulus of 2x minus a. Okay, so this half of that graph is y equals 2x minus a. And this half of the graph is y equals a minus 2x. You can think of it like that. Okay, that's a positive argument, that's a negative argument. That will help us later on. Okay, so, you know, we can, we can say that in general this is y equals the modulus of 2x minus a. So we've shown the places where it crosses the x and the y-axis, um, where it meets the y-axis and the x-axis and everything. So I think we've answered part a. Yeah, so we've got the, the sketch of both graphs and we have put the coordinate points where they meet the coordinate axes and that's fine okay so that's our part a done now we're going to go into part b where it says find the exact solutions of 4 minus x squared equals a modulus of 2x minus 1 so what, what i'm going to do is we could use the same sketch because they're, they're basically this you know the same they'll, the sketch will look the same except in this case your a is going to be here um basically one isn't it a is going to be one 2x minus one and 4 minus x squared, yeah. So we can use the same sketch if we want to, and we can say, okay, this is the point. In fact, I can make another quick sketch just to make it slightly different if you want, no problem. I'll just make a quick sketch. One of them will look like this, and the other one will look like this. And, okay, this, uh, no, not like that. It will go like that, and it will, it will reflect on this axis. And it will go up something like that okay so this is the y equals 2x minus 1 branch and this is the y equals 1 minus 2x branch okay the opposite of this this is going to be 1 this is going to be um this is going to be plus 2 this is going to be minus 2 this is going to be 4 and this is going to be um, a half okay we don't actually need the, that detail here but Basically, we want to find the exact solutions of this equation. Now, I know the exact solutions of this equation are going to be this point and that point. Okay? There's going to be some false solutions as well. Because if I continue on this line, if I continue on this line further this way, I'll see that it's going to meet the graph again somewhere over here. And this is going to also meet the graph somewhere over there. So there's going to be two extra solutions which I'm going to reject. Okay, so I'll just draw this further down. So you'll see that eventually these will meet Let me make that a bit neater eventually these will meet down here somewhere okay because that's going to get more and more steep you could say and this is stay the same gradient so eventually they'll meet up somewhere over down here and these will also meet up somewhere over here okay so we're going to end up with two solutions which are false solutions and two solutions which are correct solutions so let's do the uh, you know um Equation. So we know that this point here, let's call this point A. We can say at A. So at A, this is where y equals 1 minus 2x meets, okay, y equals 4 minus x squared. So we can say for 1 minus 2x is equal to 4 minus x squared. So we can call this x squared and minus 2x and minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so if we bring everything to this side, you get x squared minus 2x and 1 minus 4 minus 3 equals 0. Factorizing this, I think this does factorize. You have 1 plus 1 minus. It's going to be a 3 and a 1 minus 3 and a plus 1. So x equals minus 1 and x equals 3.
Okay, so we've now solved the equation where this graph meets this curve. Now there's two points where they meet. One is going to be over here, which is x equals 3. So that is going to be rejected. And one is over here, so that must be the x equals minus 1. So we know one of the solutions is x equals minus 1. So sketching, us, sketching will help us to, to spot which are the correct solutions here. This is the correct solution, this is not. And then the other branch at B, I'll call this point B, um, at B we can say um, that this is where y equals 2x minus 1 meets the curve, y equals 4 minus x squared. So we can say that 2x minus 1 equals 4 minus x squared. If you get x squared and you get plus 2x and you get minus 1 minus 4, which is minus 5 equals 0. And I don't think this does factorize because two numbers that give you minus 5 and add to give you 2. Nope. So you have to either complete the square or use the formula. If I complete the square, um, I'll have x squared plus 2x equals 5. I'll have x plus 1 squared minus 2. Remember, you take half the coefficient and minus 1, sorry. Take away the square of the number inside the bracket, which is going to be 1. 1 squared is 1 equals 5. So we end up with x plus 1 squared is equal to 5 plus 1, which is 6. So x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. So x is minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. So we can see that the two coordinates that we have, one of them is this point here. This is probably this is where x equals 1 plus the square root of 6. And this must be where x equals 1 minus the square root of 6. Okay, 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. So, oh, sorry, this is minus 1 minus the square root of 6. And this is minus 1 plus the square root of 6. Okay, so this is the coordinate that we need. We need this one here, okay, because this is going to be the positive one. Root 6 is more than 1. So this is going to be the positive one. This is going to be the negative one. So x equals minus 1 plus root 6. So we can just make it clear here that our solutions are x equals minus 1 and x equals minus 1 plus the square root of 6. Those are our two solutions that we accepted, and we, we, we rejected x equals minus 1 minus root 6. That was rejected. We rejected x equals 3. Those were extra solutions which don't actually exist, but our equations give us those solutions because the you know equation doesn't realize that this graph has bounced up here, and it, it doesn't continue. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number seven, part B, which was question 11 from the end of topic worksheet. I hope that was clear, and I think that was every, find the exact solutions. Yes, so we had to give everything as exact solutions so we don't round this to 2SF or anything like that, or 3SF. And there we have the answer. Now, um, if you would like to see other questions from the uh, Solomon paper D, you can click on this um, playlist. If you want to see other questions from this worksheet and the endotopic worksheet, you can click on the playlist over here. If you'd like to see other questions about graphs and functions from P3, click over here and I'll put some parts paper or something from P3 in the card on top. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you again soon in another video.